What's up everybody? Welcome to the Fitness Realty channel. My name is TJ McClelland and I'm the broker. I'm super excited to share all the things we have planned with you. So sit back, strap in and let's have some fun. Okay, well, welcome, of course, truly title does a really good job of just giving us a great space. And I'm excited to kind of go through this business builder plan with each of you. And then I am recording it so everybody else can get the information. They won't have the material. They'll have to come and get a book from Truly Title. But we are very appreciative of what they've given to us with the book and the material. Plus, then they always just host us really well. So I always enjoy being here. So we're going to jump right into it. I'm going to try to crash course the entire book in an hour. And then after that, if you guys write down some stuff like in the margins or you have questions and things, then I'm gonna just stick around for after that and we can kind of just do a little deeper dive. But I didn't wanna waste everybody's first hour, so we're gonna like crank hard and go fast. And then if you wanted to stay, you can. If you have other things to do, then you can head off. But I wanted to make sure everybody had an opportunity to see all of it at one time. So we are gonna cover all of these topics. These are all in the book. So let's do go to the page three, which is that vision board section. And I'm going to be doing this right alongside of you. So I haven't filled out my book at all, other than some like ideas of things that I wanted to make sure we didn't miss. And so I'm going to set a timer for five minutes, or if somebody will set a timer really quick on your phone, will you do that, Skylar? Set a timer for five minutes. And I want you to just scribble down stuff in every one of these boxes on the vision board. And when the timer goes off, hopefully you've got something in each section. And like I said, mine is also blank. So I'm going to be like scribbling down stuff as fast as possible as well. Okay, you ready? All right, go. Five minutes. Okay. So <laughs> I want you guys to, after this class, of course, like go back and we'll have time or you'll have plenty of time to go back and and really like think about things. Sometimes though, I feel like our vision board process, we try to put too much effort into dialing it in. And sometimes it's just easier to just blurb it all out on the page. So in particular, one of my goals is to do 40 million this year as our team. And so I really think that we can accomplish that. But the rest of it, I just tried to scribble it out. And so mine just looks like chicken scratch, of course. But what I wanted to make sure that everybody did was blob down some ideas. And then later on today, this week, you can really kind of go back and dial that in. Okay, let's move on to the next page. Okay, so the next set of the plans is called the current snapshot. So it's all about knowing your numbers. I went to a seminar and during that they were talking, it was a bunch of high level realtors that are running big teams or they're running small teams and doing like a thousand deals a year, which is incredible. But they really knew their numbers. They could literally like, this is how many we're going to do this month. This is how many we're going to do next month. This is what we did last year. I actually didn't write down any of mine. Like I said, I'm just kind of going through it with you guys. And so if you look on that first or on the on page four for total sales, if you haven't had any sales, it's kind of easy to put some zeros, right? Like that's not a big deal. But for us that have closed, you really want to start dialing that in and thinking, okay, well, how much did I actually close? Do I know what that is? Am I tracking it? And then I put in mind, it's time for research and homework on that. And so if you haven't closed yet, then you can really put in for your 2021 goal or totals, just put a few zeros in there so you can really say, okay, was I working my business to the best of my ability or was it something that was kind of in the back burner. And so if you think of it as, well, this year I want to close, right? Everybody wants to close. So it's easier to say, okay, this year I'm going to put my goals out there to actually work my business like a business. But the research goals like for Ben, myself and my mom, of course, to really dial in and say, what did you do last year? Because I can tell you ballpark what the team did last year. But the rest of the numbers, I have no idea. <laughs> so I literally know our numbers like the very skimming top. Okay, up next, page five. And I'm going to ask this kind of for personal and for the team. What went great last year in your guys' opinion for yourself? You can go ahead and write that down. Okay, next box. Let's skip those. We're going to fill in. What is the, because uh, this one, the very last box, 
is hit on a bunch of times. So what is it that sets you apart from everyone else out there in the market? Um, and then I'm going to make one for me and for the team. And then we'll talk about the team one. Yeah, I would totally agree with that. Your expertise that you're bringing to the table lets you speak from experience instead of like, hey, my broker told me this, <laughs> you know, which yeah. can sometimes be hard. It's it's valuable if I give you a good piece of information to relay that. But it's also yours comes with more power behind it. Right. Um, which I which I think is really awesome. Something that I wrote down for me is that my clients can call me or text me like anytime, 24 seven, which you guys know, being on the staff, you can do that as well. But I try to really portray that to everybody else around me. For the team as a whole, I put that we encourage everyone to be stronger every day, which just really sets us apart from other companies out there that just can get the job done, which is fine. Most people can sell and get the job done, but it's what other value can you bring to the table? Okay, so for the other boxes, we'll come back to that, or you guys can think about them later today or this week, of course. So let's move on to page six. Let's talk about preparation. The thing that I want to set in this first box, and we're not going to like try to set sales volumes, commission, total sales, and everything, because there's a lot of just nuances to get started. And so if you have an idea in mind, the idea might not really fit until you have some of the training back behind it. So the net income, I just want to stick with that one for a second because you might have an idea of what you are trying to obtain with your real estate career or what you're trying to replace with your real estate career, right? So like if it's, let's say you make 40 grand a year or whatever, and you want to replace 40 grand a year so you can just do that in real estate and not have a regular job, that might be one thing. To lots of other people on our staff, the 20, 30, 40 grand extra that they make a year in real estate is just supplementing their other income because they want to live at that higher income bracket. So to each person, it's different. I'm not going to ask you what your ideas are, but go ahead and take like 30 seconds to just write something down in that net income goal for 2022 and determine if it's increasing your current income or if you're really trying to shift and replace your other income. Okay, let's go to page seven. And I know we're like kind of cruising through a lot of the material. So because this book is packed with stuff and a lot of it, you really need to sit down and think about. We couldn't do that in an hour. <laughs> so there's no way to do that. So let's go to page seven. I'm not going to worry about doing the pledge right now. That's something that you can write and internalize to really keep yourself motivated. Similar to like what my mom was saying, having a large why. We're going to talk about that in the motivation block. But the staying on track block, and this is kind of where I find a lot of our newer agents get really sidetracked or they get distracted. And so what I want you to kind of put down in the staying on track is either how you can stay on track or what distractor you need to eliminate or diminish a lot more so that you can try to focus on your real estate career. Go ahead and take like 20 seconds to write something in there. Okay, I'm just going to say what my biggest distractor is and it's video games sometimes. <laughs> and so staying on track, I have a great time when I'm actually on track, just burning it down and going until like three o'clock in the morning and just accomplishing a lot of stuff. However, if I start playing, that's also a code for three o'clock in the morning. And then I'm like, oh man, I haven't done anything. <laughs> and then I go to bed like, ah, this just, this just hurts. So what I want you to try to think about in there is really evaluating what you're using your time on because the time you're spending on that is the time that you are dictating and determining that is more valuable to you. So if your real estate career is more valuable than XYZ, plug in the dots of whatever you have, then really start to go, okay, I'm going to do an hour of studying, training, working with me, whatever. Or maybe it's a, I can't do an hour each day because my day is really sporadic and you have families and you have life, which is awesome. But maybe it's a, hey, there's a three hour block that I can meet with TJ or I can meet with Carrie and just say, let's just hang out and kind of bounce some ideas around and maybe block out those three hours where you might have been playing video games in my case <laughs> or whatever you're doing, right? 
we all need distraction from our everyday life because it's just really stressful, especially right now, balancing how everybody's trying to do business. So you really need to try to maintain that and say, what am I going to value my time as and what am I going to determine to use it on? Because all of us only have 24 hours a day. So it's, it's really that finite thing, right? Like, what am I going to do to spend my time? So up here on what I wanted to make sure we all understood is eliminating distractions is the key because you can't really make new time, but you have to eliminate some of the things that are pulling you away from the time that you already have. I wish there was a way to make more time, but that doesn't exist. <laughs> I've tried searching for it. <laughs> um, okay, let's talk about the motivation, right? That's that bottom left box, your why. It needs to be huge. I put huge, <laughs> right? It needs to be big, right? And that's kind of what my mom was talking about. What is the thing that's going to get you out of bed and work on your real estate career to try and achieve something? Take 30 seconds to figure out what your big why is for a second. And then I'm going to talk about one of my friends and his why, because it'll dwarf all of us. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> okay. Real quick, I have this buddy that's attached to this active duty passive network, uh, passive income network, and his why is to end veteran homelessness this decade. They've already given away like 15 homes or something crazy. So they're like on a, a fast track to just do this crazy thing. So his why is enormous. And to me, that's not fathomable, right? Like to me, I'm like, yeah, that, that makes no sense. Like those words are great to say, but it doesn't make sense in my mind. But for him and his staff, they're really pushing hard to come up with those things to do to make that happen. So what I wanted to say there was not that we should try to achieve these whys that are just ridiculously crazy and out there, but big and something that you could really accomplish. But to really say, what is it that makes you tick, right? Like what gets you out of bed to get going? And so really kind of think about that. The vision box, I want you guys to take time later today or this week to kind of really think of what's your three to five year vision that kind of really changes things. Okay, mission and values or mission and uh, vision statements and stuff. I don't really put too much stock into those because we have two of those for our company and I cannot tell you what they are. So this is where I wanted to ask you guys what your vibe is from those like, at your current companies, that do they have a vision statement and a mission statement? And do you know what those are? And do those actually like do anything for you? I was just curious. But yeah, so I feel like that one is a really good one for us as a team. And we do like put that out there quite a bit. We do have a long wordy one though. And that's where I'm like, well, maybe we need to get rid of that, you know, like <laughs> and parry it down. Cause I know like in the Air Force, the base has one or two like the mission and vision. And I'm like, and I'm reading it like at the urinal all the time, but I can't remember what it is, you know? So anyway, I just wanted to kind of hit on that. Like this page to me, it's hard to internalize because it feels so broad that you're like, well, none of that really fits me. So, you know, like I wanted to really hit on the other preparation items because they're internal. They're, what are you going to do? These are like, what outside things are we thinking about, you know? So get good at the internal and then we'll progress and maybe we'll have some rock star ones for the business. Okay, let's go to the next page. And a few of these, we're gonna really start moving quick because some of them are things that you're gonna have to do at home with your personal finances and things. So let's talk about this business goal setting really fast. So down this list in lead source, you can kind of see past clients, referrals from past clients, your sphere, referral from your sphere, which sometimes I feel like is the same thing. I would just ball it together. They have it broken out. Agent referrals, most likely until you guys get a lot larger, you might not have other agent referrals because they would need to see you as a rock star to hand them a client. But we also internal, I just want to throw this out there. Sometimes like Josh picks up the line in St. George and it might be a client up here. So kind of be ready for a referral from internal or inside the company and vice versa. Like if you guys answer the phone and they're a St. George client, by all means, work that client if you want to go down there, which is what I do, or you can hand it to Josh and just send them down. Anyway, so for this homework, 
like Ben, since you've closed and me and my mom, it's homework for that results section. My mom and I closed 40 deals last year. And out of that, I know a lot of them were referrals, but I don't know where from, right? So like, I know that most of our business is referral based business, but I could not tell you like, it came from this place, right? Yeah, or past clients, right? So it's just, it's really taking a hard look at where your people come from, what you're actually doing to achieve and obtain those clients, either in the first place or as you culture your clients. So it's just doing some homework on that. So for you guys, not as much homework, there's more homework for you guys on what you're targeting. And we'll get to that. What is one of your favorites though, out of that lead source section, mom? No, just your favorite lead source. Right. <laughs> yeah. Cause they don't shop around, right? They just say Carrie's the best and we've used her in the past. And especially right now, the case right now, she has a set of clients that closed here twice and they moved to Texas and the agent there screwing up royally. But my mom set the bar really high, which is, that's just how she is. So awesome job. But also this other agent just couldn't cut it. So, <laughs> you know, in that though, that client, she closed and then immediately they didn't shop around. They just, they knew Carrie was there to like hit them and, and get them closed. We really do. Yeah. On a broad spectrum, we may be going to Northern Virginia first, but that's in the future. <laughs> okay. So yeah, really start building your sphere of influence. If the people around you don't know that you're a realtor, start there. I would hope, and I was sitting there in the car earlier today, just when I was driving and I said, I wonder if all the people around me, if you just said, what is it that TJ does? I would hope it would be real estate is what they would say. Sometimes maybe they don't say that because <laughs> I do a lot of other things, but hopefully the majority of them would say, I'm a realtor, right? I've spent a lot of time like wearing the logo and talking about it and really making sure that the people around me know exactly what I do, hopefully. So if that's the case in your own sphere that you're out there and when people ask you what you do, if you're not telling them that you're a realtor, you should um, just like really try to culture that with the people around you. Okay, on page 10, there is a really strong goal achievement breakdown the like big business that or you know like the keller williams coldwell banker model they talk about breaking down how many people you have to talk to how many phone calls you have to do how much cold calling door knocking since i don't teach any cold calling or door knocking our success rate is much much higher because they're coming straight out of your referral network or your sphere of influence um so what i like to try to build is how to make sure that everyone around you knows exactly what you do and then having them report to that or report that to your, their friends and family. The thing I circled on that page though is a 12 hours of cold calls, 208 calls to make 50 contacts and you should be trying to do 60 calls a day. So we have things in the, the view only folder that you could do cold calling if you wanted to and I can help you set that up. That just is a lot of time that you have to pour into it. It can be effective, but it takes a lot of time that you want to push into that. So if you want to go that route, I can help you. Or if you want to help build your sphere of influence, I feel like that's stronger and I'll help you do that as well. Last thing, page 11, my mom and I and the whole staff as a, the entire staff, there's kind of a bell curve that goes across the year. It takes a little bit of time from January to ramp up and then we're crushing it through the kind of late spring summer months and then it kind of tapers off and then of course through thanksgiving and beyond the everybody that sells from about thanksgiving to the end of the year was like we have to sell this is the only time so lots of stuff trickles off so what i want to make sure that you understood here is that there is a fluctuations bell curve there so when it's winter months it's kind of nice to really take a step back evaluate your business and say what do i want to put in Kind of like what Spencer hit on the very first was, what am I pouring into my business? Because it actually takes time to get through and start getting something out of what you were putting into it. So right now we're at the start of February. So we're still at the front end of this bell curve and we still have so much area to ramp up to. So for you guys, it's really an effective time to just say, what am I gonna do each day to focus on my business? 
All right, well, let's keep moving. Okay, marketing and lead gen. This one's my favorite section out of the entire thing. I did write up there a ton of kind of ideas and there's one more slide about ideas. So we're gonna take about two minutes or so to do your unique selling proposition. And that is, what is it that you are telling everybody else that you can do better than the rest of the herd or what kind of makes you stand out from everyone else? So kind of put that as your proposition. It's built into how you can kind of tailor that and speak about it to each person, but just go ahead and write something in that box. And if you have two, you can put two. Okay, so I put for mine, I have two that I really harp on all the time to everybody that is around me, and that's speedy communication. Like, I try to hit you back as soon as possible. In here, in the last 45 minutes, I haven't been able to do that, of course, because I'm running all this stuff. But typically, I'm like sitting at the computer, and if I have somebody text me, I try to get them an immediate response so that they always know I'm faster than the next guy or gal. My experience there or my example there is one of my clients recently, like in the last week, just told me, said, we're using you because you're convenient and you respond fast. I was like, well, cool. So I guess I'm like up there, but maybe not way up there for them. But I'm so fast. They're like, we never have to wait for a response. So I would say speedy communication can always set you above the bar because a lot of people will say I'm busy which is fine, busy is fine, but when you wanna apply and get that value to them, being faster than somebody else is really easy to stand out. Second one I put down for me is 24 seven communication. Like you guys know, I just tell everybody, text me anytime, right? If you're in the dark, text me. And then so you guys can kind of, whatever you guys wrote down in there, that is the thing that you're gonna to try to build your business around. And then as you get better and better, maybe it can change and it's a fluid dynamic there. But really, I want you to focus on what is going to set you apart from everybody else. Okay, let's talk about target market number one. I'm going to put mine in target market number one being my sphere of influence or warm market. And this section is kind of something that Spencer's tools and truly titles tools can really help you be effective with. So let's say your target market like number four, after you guys have thought about whatever you want to build. Let's say your target market number four is million dollar listings with tons of equity. Spencer has a tool that will show you how to find million dollar listings with, well, million dollar homes with tons of equity so that you can go out and start marketing to those. So his class that he teaches in the future for you guys, and like what you saw last week, that can help you become more effective in a target market that you really want. So for me, let's talk about my target market number one being warm market. What is my marketing plan for that to advertise and to generate or marketing plan advertise to generate brand awareness and leads? My marketing plan there, you guys have seen it. I put it out on Facebook everywhere. I wear the shirt. I wear my coat. I wear it's on my car. Like the logo is everywhere and generates a lot of conversations. So that one's my favorite for brand awareness. We do give out a ton of swag. So like my mom and I, we buy a ton of swag each year and to give away. For you guys, if you haven't bought any swag or you just haven't you just haven't wanted to go down that road yet and mostly because you haven't sold anything yet, that's perfectly good. The easiest way to generate that brand awareness for free is to just pump it out on your social media and tell everybody around you about real estate 24 seven, but without sounding salesy, right? Just like, when they mention it and everybody wants to know what the market's doing, right? Like people ask us all the time, everywhere. We go to the base, people are like, tell me about the market. And it's like, it's hot, <laughs> you know? We get to talk about it all the time. Okay, and then your follow-up plan, really determine how you're gonna follow up with your clients. If you don't have any clients right now that you're working, really think about that. Like if you were your own client, how much communication would you want? How would that go? What would that look like? Are you texting them all the time? Are you calling them, right? Are they a person that never texts, so you have to call them, right? Think about that in your own life. Your prospecting plan, making groups to put in for your leads. And to me, I just use a CRM. So if you wanna go down the CRM road, I'll help you build that. If you wanna use Excel, 
Eric Upchurch, my friend that is trying to end veteran homelessness, uses Excel. That's it. He just types people's names and then writes down when he talks to them. <laughs> Crazy. But it's highly effective. He owns like 1,500 storage units. So super effective. I feel like it's super basic, but it is very effective. <laughs> so it's the whatever works for you. If you're using it, it will work. You just have to put time into it. All right. Networking plan for me is to host events, teach. I talk about it everywhere. The latest one I put out on the channel is to host that UFC fight night. So we'll just have some people come over or whatever. Your nurturing plan, that is kind of like what you are doing to nurture those leads that come in. Are you talking to them like five minutes after they text you? Those types of things. And then a transaction goal. I'm not going to write down transaction goals in any of those because in my opinion, I like to work my systems when people are in front of me. So like I'm always out there talking about it, but I'm not out there like, oh, I got 10 deals from this section, so I'm going to close it off. It's like, well, 10, 12 deals came, sweet. Let's keep working it. So that's up to you guys. There are tons of target market blocks that you can fill in. Like I said, Spencer will give you some tools to do some farming. I wanted to kind of move to this slide that I have here because we do have a ton of material in the view only marketing folder that you guys all have access to. We do have the 32 guerrilla marketing ideas that you could set up all these like hot sheets for KSL and a whole slew of stuff, right? Tons of ideas just in that one document. You could start a blog, letter to friends, I don't love letter to friends unless you have friends that read stuff. Yeah. And that's a great point because like her sphere might love that. My sphere is like, don't, don't write anything to me. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> but yeah, maybe, maybe, I mean, maybe I'll try it. Something that, that my mom does, like she hit on earlier was the calendars. So what I'm trying to put up here is there are many, many different avenues. They are all effective at one way or another and to some degree or another, depending on what effort you put into it, your marketing style, your um, creativity, your personality a lot of times, right? Because like my Facebook page has a ton of just my personality all over it. So it really depends on what you guys want to bring to the table there. A few that I wanted to really hit on, anytime you can get the logo on anything that you're wearing or walking around with, very big because people will always ask about what it is because they think it's a gym or they think it's uh, something else, right? So it's just like, it's a great time when they say, hey, what is that? To educate and then tell them that you're selling with us and really put it in their mind that you're the person that they should talk to or ask questions. The thing that I try to drive home is that I'm always there to ask or answer questions that people bring to me super fast with very detailed, knowledgeable experience. And so that they will always start asking questions to me instead of somebody else. And then eventually they become a client. One more that's up here is the face to face stuff. I feel like now that we're kind of coming out of COVID mostly, hopefully there's really good, strong opportunities for you to do face to face marketing and wear your logo anywhere you go to generate that conversation. I was literally walking around at uh, the home show and the home show is full of realtors, right? There's realtors everywhere. It's the home show. But people don't wanna talk to Keller Williams agents because they know exactly what they do. They know exactly what they bring to the table. They are standard, you know, I'm not saying boring, but they're standard. When I'm walking around with my logo or our logo, people wanna know what that is, right? And especially there, because they're curious, you know, we're their competition. So it always strikes up some fear, maybe, and some conversations. <laughs> so wear the logo around. Okay, let's move to really fast in the next five minutes or so, some planning processes. We're going to kind of skip the SWOT analysis because it's long and uh, you really kind of have to think about your own strengths and your own weaknesses. There is an opportunity there to be real with yourself, right? Like one of my weaknesses is I just try to blow everything out of the water and do everything all at the same time. That doesn't work a lot of times. So that's one of my weaknesses. 
Okay. So think about what you have later. I've been kind of doing that for the staff or for our team on threats. We do have lots of other outside threats, like companies trying to either steal practices that we do or steal our agents, stuff like that. And so I'm always kind of thinking about what are the threatening things out there that we can squash and or overcome because we're going to be better than they are. Okay, let's talk about operations goals really fast. And in operations goals on that page, there is a time saving tip with some of the tools that truly title has and Spencer can kind of hit on those when you do your individual classes. They do have a ton of cool tools that make it just super easy for you to just snap like net sheets and things like that to your clients. So really, the theme there is to learn what other people can offer you and how valuable it can be. Because the second you can do that for your clients and shoot them a net sheet faster than the other guy, because let's be honest, they're shopping um, unless they're in your sphere of influence. And so if you're faster than the other person, you'll get the deal most of the time. Okay, one of my top priorities for the entire staff is training like you'd hit on that everybody is catching up on training. I have about 12 more videos to make though in ideas that I just am putting out there. So there will be a lot more training coming. Pushing training is helping everyone around us to be more confident so that people can come to any of us and get their deal done. All right, let's skip over to 18. Really fast, this work-life balance, I'm not going to take time to fill this out, but mostly because my life is very unbalanced. I tend to work and work real estate, which is also my social and fun and <laughs> wealth and health and family a lot of times. So to me, I have this one avenue that really can be a full circle for me. If that's not the case for you, Really try to dial in what areas do you need to bring up in your own life to feel more balanced. All right, let's talk about business plan really fast. Okay, a lot of these numbers are going to be things that you need to think about at home. The very top line in the financial plan, that GCI is what you bring to the fitness realty team. So let's say you brought 15000 to the staff or to the company, and then it's based on your split after that. That's your net GCI. So the GCI goal is pre-split, net is what whatever your split is after that. Everybody on our staff is at a different split because they're all at different tiers, right? They're all in different points in their career. And so you just need to evaluate it for yourself. Like, where am I at in my split? What does that look like for your GCI or your gross commissionable income? The other thing I want to add right here real quick is taxes are the biggest killer. I've found this out several years in a row because I just cannot put money aside for taxes. I'm just stupid at it, which is another one of my weaknesses. But when you're close, I'm going to pay you a lot of money. Put some of that away for taxes, right? Just hold on to it. Be ready to pay taxes so it doesn't bite you in the butt like it does for me every year. <laughs> Let's go to 20 for a second. Your personal expenses. Something that I find really simple to do for switching to a 1099 position is if your expenses are really, really low and you get really lean in your personal finances, it makes this job way, way easier and less stressful. So in my personal, personal life, I can run my entire family for less than 40 grand a year. That's like six deals, maybe seven deals. So my mom and I only need to do seven deals for me to keep surviving. So the, the thing that I want to put here is the leaner you can make your personal finances, the easier it is to not have commission breath for one and talk to your clients like, I got to close this deal. Otherwise, we're not eating, which is your clients can smell it on you like the second you get out of the car. So just be really careful about that. But the other thing to that is if you can stay with your expenses really low, you can go 90 days with closing nothing and just working your business and then go three or four deals in a row and be like, yep, we're good. So on personal finances, the only thing I wanted to mention there, because we're all in different levels of that and how controlling you are about your own finances. I just wanted to make sure everybody can see that if the leaner you can get, the easier it is to be straight 1099. And to caveat that to the very first section we were in, the income goal you might have if it's to replace one, if your expenses are low, it gets really easy to replace that other income and then just do this full time. The 
pumping money into your business for growing, like most of you have seen, I don't recommend any of that stuff. Like I don't recommend going out and doing postcards and spending money, at least unless it's on some logo stuff, because that actually does work. But they're in the master your marketing folder that my mom has in the view only folder. There is this kind of golden 7% rule that a lot of big gurus have talked about before where it's if you close $10,000 worth in your business, then you're going to spend 7% of that on marketing or swag or your online campaign or whatever. It could be anything, right? They use 7% for a good rule of thumb because it's been shown to actually improve and grow your business as long as you're buying good stuff. I like to use 10% in my own lifestyle. I spend a lot more than that probably, so my budgeting is bad. But the company itself is spending 20%. So we're spending way more to grow the company than that 7% rule because I want to keep on growing. But in your personal lives, 7% is a good rule of thumb. Okay. Yep. Business expenses. What are you spending to grow your business off after your first check or second or third? The page that talks about savings and debts. Are you working to pay down your debt? Because like I said, that helps make this job a lot more easy and simple because your expenses are not making you have commission breath. As you can see up here, it does make it much, much easier like I talked about. And then that very last page on 23, professional vendors for title. We have Nicole that you've seen walking around. She was greeting us. And then Danielle is another one of my faves. She's also in this office. So you can use either one of those for title and they'll for sure get you all their info. I'm your broker, of course. Lenders, I love Michelle or McLean. And then home insurance, I like Brent. He does my personal stuff. And all this info I can get you later. <laughs> and that's a wrap. Thank you so much for supporting us. We'll see you next time. And we love you. Later.